my name is Sue. Welcome to Holy Redeemer's Childbirth Education Series. I'm one of the childbirth educators, and today's topic for conversation is cesarean birth. And you may wonder, why do we have a whole class on cesarean birth? Doing some research for this class, I looked up the most recent vital statistics from the Centers for Disease Control, and the most recent are from 2018. The statistics are that approximately 30 to 32 percent of women in the United States will have cesarean birth, and that includes both planned and unplanned cesarean birth. And so for that reason, it's important. It's about one in four approximately women will have a cesarean birth who come to the hospital. I checked with our director and we are pretty much on par for the national statistics as well too. So we are approximately in the 30% range as well. So it's important for you to understand that there is a chance that you may have either a planned or unplanned cesarean birth here at Holy Redeemer Hospital. Some of the reasons why you may need to have cesarean birth are listed over here on our poster. And so we'll go through these each just a little bit. They have some technical terms. So occasionally a mom is in labor and her labor isn't effective, meaning that if there is no progress that the baby or the mom are making to have the baby be delivered vaginally. And so this isn't determined within an hour or two. Typically, this is over a series of one to two days um, after we try some interventions and see if they can't work. And so if we call that lack of progress. There's another uh, term up here called fetal distress, and that means that baby's just not really adjusting too well to labor. And we know that by, because we monitor baby's heart rate during labor. Again, it's important that we have an accurate understanding of the baby's heart rate, and the baby should adjust and adapt to the different stages of labor. And if they're having difficulty, then we try to intervene. If we can't solve the problem for the baby, and the fact of the matter is, is that the baby's heart rate can't maintain it at a normal rate, then the doctor may consider doing cesarean birth. Occasionally the baby's not fitting well into the pelvis. We had talked about previously in another class, the best position for the baby to be in is what's called head down. But occasionally this, the baby doesn't get the message and they don't fit head down in the pelvis. Sometimes they come feet first. Sometimes they come butt first. Sometimes they try to put their elbow through the birth canal. None of these positions are really helpful for delivery. And if the doctor is unable to adjust the baby, then this will result in a cesarean birth as well too. Many times the doctor can tell the position of the baby prior to you coming into the hospital. So if the baby's been in a breech position and still in breech position, they might just go ahead and schedule it for cesarean birth. Um, there could be problems with the placenta, meaning the baby's just not getting enough blood and oxygen and nutrients to be able to sustain the baby in well health during your labor. And so that may result then in fetal distress as well as maternal distress if mom's doing heavy bleeding. Okay. There might be something in your history or in your adaptation to labor that would put you at higher risk for continuing on in labor. And so doctor may choose to suggest cesarean birth too. And occasionally moms have cesarean birth for their first baby and then they have the choice after that time to choose whether they're gonna have a cesarean again or they're gonna do a trial of labor called a, a vaginal birth after cesarean. So the idea is, is these are the typical reasons for cesarean birth. Sometimes it's just a matter of fit. The baby doesn't fit in the birth canal or the pelvis well. The mom's pelvis can't accommodate the size of the baby. So these are some of the reasons we choose to do a cesarean birth. And this means that rather than having a delivery through the birth canal, through the vagina, the mom will need to have cesarean birth. The word cesarean means to cut. And so what they're gonna do is cut your abdomen to get to your uterus, cut your uterus, and bring the baby out through your abdomen. So that's the surgical procedure. Um, before we do this, the doctor will have a very uh, quick conversation, but we'll have all the key components. Why do you need to have a cesarean? What they're going to do specifically? Um, and how they're going to put you back together? And then what to expect at least immediately after delivery as well too. So the doctor will cover all of that, and then once again, ask for your 
her signature to consent that says you understand and that you agree with the plan of care. It's your opportunity to ask all your questions and state all your concerns, both you and your support person. In order to prepare you for cesarean birth, there's some things that the nurse will need to do. And what she'll need to do um, to prepare you is, again, make sure you have an IV, make sure you have enough fluid in your system. They may insert a catheter prior to going to the operating room, because that's what you'll need to deliver, or they'll insert the, catheter, the Foley catheter um, into your bladder when you get into the OR. It just depends on the urgency and how fast things are moving. Regardless though, that catheter in your bladder will be necessary. So if you don't already have one, um, or you're not getting it in, in the labor room that you're in, you'll be getting it in the operating room too. So again, you will not be feeling your bladder filling up. During surgery, we need to make sure your bladder is completely empty. And so it's really important um, that we do that by inserting the catheter into your bladder. There's a small risk of infection, having a urinary tract infection after a catheterization. So your nurse on postpartum floor will make sure to give you information about that as well too. There is a certain position that you'll be in in the operating room. The operating room is very cold. Um, while we are all masked and gowned for your delivery, we will do so in a sterile fashion uh, if you have to go into the OR. And so you'll see in this poster that people have caps on their hair, they have masks on their face, they'll have a shield as well too. They'll be wearing sterile gloves if they're right at your abdomen, as well as a sterile gown. There'll be a drape over you. And unfortunately, although it looks terrible, your arms will be gently um, uh, placed uh, out like a almost like a cross and so as a reminder they'll put a little strap on each one of your arms to to not reach out and touch the doctors <laughs> during surgery they want to maintain that sterile environment um, there's usually a drape placed on your uh, uh, in front of your, your face, you know, where your chest is, so that you can't actually see the doctors performing the operation. We do allow one support person in the operating room, um, and uh, that person sits at your head of the bed, and they won't be able to see anything either. Um, we typically bring the support person in once all the surgeons are in place, all the nurses are in place, and everybody is where they need to be. And literally, your support person is guided to their special chair, which is at the head of your, your operating room bed. You're placed on your back with a slight tilt to, to your belly. So you're not flat on your back, you have a little bit of a tilt. Um, the doctors clean your belly, they drape your belly, and then they begin the surgery. The surgery typically takes approximately an hour um, and they will make sure that they fully identify you prior to um, the cleaning and the draping of your belly. So again, we, we do a lot of asking your name, date of birth, <laughs> um, but prior to an invasive procedure like a cesarean birth where they're cutting open your belly, they want to make sure they have the right patient for that procedure. It's very important that you understand once the baby is born, the baby will go immediately and directly over to our intensive care nursery staff who attend that delivery, all our cesarean births, our neonatologists or our neonatal nurse practitioner attend, at least one of those two will attend, and um, a neonatal intensive care nursery nurse will also attend as well too. In addition, most of the time we try to keep the nurse who's with you in labor, um, with you or in triage as the case might be, so that you get that continuity, so you have one familiar uh, sound um, that you know, that the nurse's voice, and then also obviously your physician as well too who becomes the surgery, surgeon for your case. Um, so it's about an hour. So immediately after delivery, the baby's taken from your belly, given to our um, neonatal specialists. They make sure the baby is healthy and well. They wrap the baby up after they do the identification bracelets, the footprints, and then the baby comes over to your support person. Your support person can hold the baby. And if you're able to, they might be able to give you the baby on your chest as well too. It just depends. Typically it's a safer option to have your support person sit there and hold the baby. They've got two hands and their belly's not being operated on, just for safety for the baby's purposes. Um, so after that hour, we take the drapes off. We'll make sure we have put a nice bandage on your belly. Um, we have held down your legs on the table just because again, with spinal anesthesia, which is the first choice from anesthesia, um, your legs are numb. You won't be able to even move yourself over um, from the OR table over to your, your bed. So we're gonna put you on a special mattress and just pull you gently over to your new bed.
The baby will be given to you to hold in your arms. We'll ask your support person to go change their clothes. And then everybody kind of goes over to our recovery area. And at that point, you'll spend at least two hours with your recovery nurse, which hopefully is the same nurse who's been with you the whole time. And um, she will make sure that you're not bleeding too heavily. She'll be checking your bandage. She'll check your uterus to make sure that it's nice and tight and firm. She'll change your pads that might be needed. She'll check the uh, drainage from your Foley catheter. And also, she will make sure that you don't have any pain. And if you do have pain, she has medication that your physician will have ordered for her to administer during that time. Um, we also will put um, leads on your chest to monitor your heart rate, your respiratory rate, and also um, a blood pressure cuff on your arm so that we make sure all of your vital signs stay stable. So it's pretty invasive during that time. Usually moms are really tired. Every 15 minutes we're checking a lot of stuff. Um, it can be pretty intrusive, but nevertheless, we wanna make sure that after a major abdominal surgery, there is nothing wrong with you. You're not bleeding, um, there's no infection, there's no reason for concern. Um, we will have the baby go in your arms after the first 15 minute check. We'll try to do something called skin to skin. That we're, that's where we expose your chest. We expose the baby naked onto your chest and we put some nice warm blankets over the top of both of you. Um, that skin to skin is so helpful for the baby's bonding process. It's helpful for the mom's bonding process. Um, it keeps the baby warm. It makes sure that their blood sugar, which is the stuff we use for energy, is nice and stable. And the baby, if you're gonna breastfeed, is in very close proximity to the breast. And within one to two hours of delivery, the baby usually does a self latch onto your breast, which is good stuff. We have very, very limited visiting hours at this time. So after delivery, the only person we'll be able to see in recovery area will be your support person who's been your support person the whole time. So again, you'll stay in that area for about two hours. We'll continue doing all of the checks that I just explained. And um, after two hours, we'll move you over to our postpartum floor. Stay tuned for the discussion on recovery and postpartum in our next segment. Thank you so much.